A group of hardline conservatives with no shortage of firebrand members have now voted to kick out Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. A member of the House Freedom Caucus, Maryland Congressman Andy Harris, says that they booted her just before the end of last month. And before we tell you what did cross the line, this is the kind of stuff that did not with the House Freedom Caucus in the past. The so-called plane that crashed into the Pentagon. It's odd, there's never any evidence shown for a plane in the Pentagon. The Democrats are now controlled by the Jihad Squad, led by AOC, the little communist from New York City. January 6th was just a riot at the Capitol. And if you think about what our Declaration of Independence says, it says to overthrow tyrants. Before you ask, no, it was not the suggestion from 2018 that the wildfires in California were started because of Pacific Gas and Electric, the Rothschild Inc., and former California Governor Jerry Brown conspired to fire lasers from space. The breaking point for the House Freedom Caucus was apparently this heated exchange. You see playing out here Water, between please. Marjorie Taylor Greene and the other person, Colorado Congressman Lauren Boebert. Green accused Boebert at this time, we are told from reporting later on, of copying her article of impeachment and reportedly called her a little B. Congresswoman Green refused to comment on her status in the House Freedom Caucus, but said in a statement in part, quote, in Congress, I served Northwest Georgia first and I served no group in Washington. Joining me now to discuss and laughing as I was reading that is Scott Jennings, former special assistant to President George W. Bush, and Bakari Sellers, former Democratic state rep from South Carolina, and the host of the Bakari Sellers <laughs> you podcast. You're giving me the giggles. <laughs> okay, well then I'll go to son Scott. Of, son of a bee, you can't <laughs> be doing that. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, My somebody parents level. watch, I can't do that. <laughs> anyway, Scott, what happened um, to the 11th commandment from Ronald mm. Reagan, thou shalt not speak ill of any Republican. Now we've got the House Freedom Caucus kicking out Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, I wonder if this is really the thing or if the fact that she's actually been a pretty good ally of Kevin McCarthy. I mean, she stood with Kevin McCarthy. She helped him become the speaker. She voted with him on the debt deal. Um, he's used her, you know, a lot here. Uh, he's got a narrow majority. And they're using this as the trigger point. Uh, but I actually wonder if it's just they don't like the fact that she's, you know, uh, become card-carrying member of the establishment <laughs> in mean, the it, House right now. You it know? definitely shows how fractured House Republicans are. Oh, they're a mess. I mean, look, you know, um, he, there's an old saying my, my father would say that if uh, you never argue with a fool because people watching can't tell the difference. And when you look at that, I mean, you just can't tell the difference of what's happening. And when you, when you just sit back and you understand the dialogue that was happening between the two, uh, it just shows that the, they, the decorum between Congresswoman Bobart and Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is below that and below the dignity of the United States Congress. When I was growing up, I'm sure when Scott was growing up, he's older than I am, <laughs> but substantially. But regardless, when, when we were growing up, I think we, we held the United States Congress to a higher uh, esteem. The, the individuals who served us, we believed them to be uh, carrying themselves with a decorum and a dignity. Um, and these two ladies simply have not been able to do that. And by exchanging that type of terminology, by exchanging that type of rhetoric on the floor, by calling somebody else, to, to quote you, Caitlin, a little B, that, that is just, it's below the dignity of office. And I think all Americans, Democrats and Republicans alike, should have some shame. And that it's, it's over who got to file impeachment articles first against President Biden. On another issue, though, on the campaign trail of who may be president next, we have learned from the DeSantis campaign that they have raised $20 million in the six weeks or so since he has entered uh, the race, that came after we learned Trump raised about $35 million. That's a lot of money for DeSantis, $20 million in those six weeks. But he has had a series of missteps on the campaign trail. Is that enough to make up for it? Well, and you add it to what he brought into the race from Florida. He's got plenty of money to communicate. I mean, you know, the, the higher you climb in these campaigns, the less money matters. Do you have enough to communicate? Do you have enough to operate? Obviously, he does. Obviously, Trump does. I, I worry about the rest of the campaigns having enough money to and oxygen to, to last. But he's got plenty of money to get his message out there. The question for him is not money. It's, is there an audience for this? And right now, Donald Trump's so dominant in the primary that it, it, no amount of money may be enough. And and obviously, he's fighting hard, and he's bringing up some issues right now. But uh, Trump's been hard to dislodge so far. And the money has not deterred the other non-Trump candidates. That's his first mission, mm -hmm. is to get rid of everybody else. Well, Ron DeSantis has one singular problem. It's the more that people meet him, the less they like him. Um, I, I compare him. Florida excluded? Florida excluded, probably. <laughs> and I, I think many people in Florida, once they actually, he didn't have to run a campaign. I mean, you and I 
could have beaten Charlie Crist. That's a whole other story. But, but Ron DeSantis is not a very likable politician. He does not do well in retail politics. People like his policy, I think. Um, certain people like his policy. They just don't like the person. Um, and I, I believe we're, we're seeing him turn into Scott Walker. We're seeing him turn into Tim Pawlenty. I don't know if viewers remember those names, but at one point in time, they were the next big it thing. Everybody thought they were the front runner to be the GOP nominee, but they, they turned into Icarus. They flew too close to the sun. So DeSantis was actually just on Fox before we came on air, and he was asked about why he's not resonating with voters. It was really fascinating. This is what he said. I've also been attacked more than anybody, as you know, Will. You know, Donald Trump has spent over $20 million attacking me. That's more than he spent supporting Republican candidates in last year's midterm election. Now, you can't win with just Republican voters. I think we showed in Florida, you know, if you want a big victory, you got to win independent voters. you got to win people who haven't voted for our, our party in the last several cycles. I've show, shown I can do that, and I think we can do it nationally. Is he doing stuff to do that, though, to appeal to independent voters and people who haven't voted for Republicans? Well, look, he's got to win a Republican primary first, but his electoral success in Florida came on the backs of a lot of independents and a lot of Democrats, uh, and he flipped some big areas in Florida that traditionally vote Democrats. So he has a history of doing that, but you can't get to that part of the game unless you win the Republican primary, and the issues that resonate in the Republican primary right now, he is hitting on. Again, though, I just go back to Trump's got half the party, the other half wants to do something else, and you got a whole bunch of people that are fighting for that second half. It's not Trump. He's got to dispatch the rest of the field. The problem is that most Americans know him to be 5'8". Most Americans know him to be the governor of Florida, who's not Donald Trump, who fought against Mickey Mouse and lost. And so when those are the characteristics people know you for, you have to stand for something. And he doesn't stand for anything right now in this presidential primary. Bakari Sellers, Scott Jennings, thanks for keeping this panel so pure tonight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're going to Probably. church on Sunday. <laughs> exactly. <Caitlin. laughs>